And here's a second attempt at doing the same recording. I came back into the room and I hadn't put the microphone on. But there will always be things that hijack us, slow us down, trip us up, and give us a total new sense of where we should be going in terms of direction. That's life. That's going to happen. If you want to make a change, if you want to do something different, you will have a change in your physical circumstances. It might be your living environment, your workspace, all those sorts of things. But also up here and here, you will need to make a change and you will feel your way through that change emotionally. I had an hour's conversation last week with a friend who wants to make the physical move from a seaside town on the south coast of England, halfway up the country to a market town in one of the moorland areas of Staffordshire and or Derbyshire. One of the things she's really worried about is finding the right place from which to start her business. She wants to try her hand at making silver jewellery which is an exquisite process, but it's also incredibly intricate and difficult. So she's thinking, what do I do to get the right workshop? Can I work from a room at home? Do I need to be part of a community hub of other artists and creative people and pay rent on that? And I said, look, get on the bus, get up to the moorlands, visit two or three small towns and decide which of them draws you, which of them gives you an emotional connection or a sensation that with the artistic people in this community. I could settle, I could feel happy, I could try it for a year and immerse myself in the creation of the jewellery and see where that takes me. Anything more than that is total guesswork because we're not in control of it. Being an artist, being a creator is an incredibly difficult process because you can't plan for it in the same way that you can if you turn up for work and somebody gives you a salary every month. It's completely different. We are selling our art. We are creating things which we hope people will love and they will buy. But they won't buy it online just because they see it the first time. So stop making excuses that you can't get started until you have done all the research, that you have to control all the information or know exactly what's going to happen day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, etc. It doesn't work like that. Five years ago, there is no way I would have known where I'm living right now, how I would be making my living, not just from my writing, from other sources of income. And I wouldn't even have thought about having a YouTube channel, let alone two. Those things are beyond our ability to plan or to process. We can have goals and plans and ideas, but you have to stop making excuses. And I think you have to generally jump into activity and make things happen and see where it takes you. Being creative means that we will fall flat on our faces sometimes. I can plan to do something and it doesn't happen that week. Last week I was hoping to create five new videos. It didn't happen. I created one and I'm really proud of it. It's the Betsy Lerner one, an editor's advice to writers. And that's a video I've been thinking about doing for several months. Finally, it just clicked last week. I stopped pushing myself to think, oh, I've got to put that in the diary. And on a Friday afternoon, I had several hours spare. And I went back through my notes from the book that I've taken over the last six months on another reading of it. And then I did a little bit of recording on the Monday and some more on the Wednesday and edited it on a Friday. It took several hours but it took me several months to actually say, yes, I've done it. I've published the video and I'm happy with it. Being a creative is not about the money. It's not about selling the thing. It's about creating it. Whether you are sculpting or handcrafting fantastic small wooden boxes for gifts or for family treasures to be stored in, whether you are writing poetry or even performing poetry, in public as somebody I met recently does. It's about being in the creative process. The money may come, the money may well follow, but you can't guarantee it. You can't say, I'm going to make £5,000 this year from my paintings, or I'm going to make £5,000 from the next book that I sell. No, you can hope for those things. You can have the intention of creating those things, but it's not a solid. It's not something that you can guarantee or you can hang your hat on and say, this is going to happen. I might look at my YouTube channels and think, I'd like to have another 100 subscribers in the next two months. But the truth is, all I can do is create content and share it. And it's not for the positive feedback I get. And often I get negative feedback, but it's about I have to make videos because my passion is sharing the idea of this writing life, this writing journey, 
and the process that is not just mine as the author of my self-help books or the prospective author of a series of crime fiction stories. It's about the process of thinking, will I write today? Do I go to a coffee shop to write? Or do I sit in the office late at night once my family have gone to bed? And do I create words? If we've got things happening, as we have often at weekends, do I carve out time by getting up at six in the morning and going up onto the roof and writing there for an hour? Or do I sit in the garden late in the afternoon before other folks come in or move out of the house? What I'm trying to say is it's not easy. It's frustrating and often it's a very slow process. This is about you having to produce, having to create, to craft, to sculpt, to mould, to bring something into being from your activity and from the passion that you have for this thing which we call art, which we call creativity. You and I, we move through our creative process day by day by day. It is a journey. It is a journey. And with any journey, we stop for fuel. We stop for a break. We stop because we get lost. We stop because we're unsure that we're on the right route or we're nervous about the route that we're driving on and we think actually maybe there's a safer way to get there or a quicker way or we think actually that bridge is out i've got to reverse back up the track and go a different way but if you are making or painting or sculpting or building or putting together the things which become your finished item of work you're on track you're doing what's necessary You might be squeezing 20 minutes today and two hours tomorrow. You might be hyper-organized and hyper-efficient and put 40 minutes into your calendar every day to create the thing which is your art, your piece of beauty, your piece of this is me, this is me in a form that I have crafted. That's absolutely fine. Anything goes, but you can't make excuses and say, oh, I can't do it today because... Yes, you can do it today, because it's important to you, because it means everything to you. It's not about the money. It's not about the final ticket price or the sale marker on the item. It's about, I have to do this because I'm creative. I have to do it because without giving that form of expression to who I am, I feel like I'm losing out. I feel like something is missing in my life. That's a good reason for doing it. That's a powerful reason for getting out of bed in the morning and thinking, right, I'm going to create, I'm going to craft something today because I have to. And don't get stuck on the idea that you have to have the perfect workshop. You have to locate yourself in the absolute best town possible. Of course, those are attractive criteria to have to being in the right place emotionally as well as physically as a creator, as an artist. But Sometimes I have to write at the kitchen table because somebody else wants the office in our house. Sometimes I go to a coffee shop and it's noisy or there's a group of people, they're interrupting my peace of mind. It's not their problem unless I let it be a problem. It's not my problem unless I focus on the potential distraction. No, sometimes you will paint in a thunderstorm. Sometimes you will try and write in terrific heat outside in the garden but it doesn't have to be perfect you don't need the best workshop you don't have to find yourself in the ideal lifelong community where you will always be and always be a part of things and always create perfectly that doesn't happen get that out of your head it is an excuse that you think you need it and that excuse is probably stopping you from producing so Let go of those ideas, push them away, get rid of them. And instead, what can you do as an artist today? What can you create today, whether it is for 10 minutes or 40 minutes? I don't need a perfect pen. I can cope with a rough scrap of A4 paper or a block of paper that I buy for a couple of dollars from the local stationery shop or supermarket. I don't need a gold fountain pen. I'm completely okay with a 50 cent biro or a one pound rollerball pen that I can pick up when I go to the supermarket. I've got a laptop, I've got an Alpha Smart, I've got an iPad. But pen and paper, at the end of the day, is how we all started writing as kids at school, as teenagers, as potential poets and novelists and scribblers. And when you scribble well with a pen and paper, and that's all 
I need as an artist? What is it that you are saying to yourself you have to have, but which, whilst you wait for its arrival, is actually stopping you being productive, stopping you being creative, and holding you back from who you are? We want to see your work. We want to read your poem or buy your book, pick it off the shelf or download it onto our Kindle, or or we want to go to an art festival in our town in a month's time or six months' time and talk to you as an artist, learn a little bit about your backstory. We might not buy from you on that occasion, but if we see you at the next show and we've got the money that we need because we didn't have it the first time we met you, we're probably going to buy something to hang on our wall and say, I like that picture, but I also enjoyed meeting the person who painted it. Your creative process is important, but sometimes the people who will turn up and buy your products or your output as an artist, they will only buy because they've met you. That's very important for a lot of us. We find an artist whose character we've enjoyed, and on the second or the third time we meet them at an art festival or an art show or a weekend event in a village hall, we go, right, here's the money. I'd like to take that picture home with me. But don't think you've got to get it all right. It hasn't got to be perfect. You have to create when you can create, but focus on the fact that you will create and you are a creative. Don't let the fear of not getting it right stop you from starting. That will be an enormous mistake, not just for you as the creator, but for us as the potential buyer of what you are making. Sit down and create something. It's okay to do it badly because you're not going to do it well to begin with. This is a new thing. You're not a full-time artist. You're not a full-time creator. And even if you are, it's okay to get it wrong. It's okay to make mistakes, to have to go back and repaint that piece or to re-sketch that architectural drawing or to put the poem in a drawer and take it out two or three weeks later and think, my goodness, how on earth is that third verse existing in the format that it does? And then you can recreate it, you can redraft it, you can read it aloud, and you get a sense that it is where it needs to be. That's okay. You didn't get it right the first time. I've never got a book right the first time. My first book was, was a book about me as a small landlord in small provincial towns in England, and it was a fast write, but it was a slow second and third edit. But this one, 10 minute budget, that took me a month to write. It's probably one of my favorite books. And I wrote it during NaNoWriMo on an old fashioned distraction free writing tool called an Alpha Smart Neo. At the beginning of the month, I didn't realize that was the book I was gonna write. I thought I was gonna write something completely different. And it's okay. So stop making excuses about having to get things correct perfect, be well-timed, be perfectly choreographed, that doesn't happen. As creatives, sometimes the last person we trust is ourselves. We want to get things right. We want to put ourselves in a place where we are happy and content in expressing what's important to us. But we're the last people we trust. We're the last people we give consideration and kindness and nurture to. We need that nurture. We need to look after ourselves. We need to support ourselves. But waiting for things to be perfect is not the right way forward. Waiting for things to be 100% right is not going to serve you or I. So let go of that expectation that that's the right way to be. Don't slow yourself down by thinking that you have to research everything before you do it. As a writer, that's a really natural expectation. Oh, I've, I've got to know the street layout of the town I'm, I'm putting into my story, or I need to know the statistics for the number of people of this age who use that product on a regular basis. No, you can guesstimate it and you can research it later. But if it slows down your writing, don't do it. If you need to know the names of every single metro stop in a thriller you're writing about Lisbon in Portugal, you can put the name in later. You can go on YouTube and watch five or six videos on a public transport system in any city in the world. And that will give you the detail. But don't let that be what stops you from actually writing the manuscript and putting the words down on paper. It hasn't got to be perfect. It's just got to be written. It hasn't got to be totally beautiful, but it's got to be painted. It hasn't got to be completely aesthetically correct for it to be recognized as the building that people will think, oh, I want the print of that because that's a building that's important to me. 
Stop limiting yourself. You just need to accept yourself as who you are and to know what's important to you on your creative journey and as an artistic person. So, no more excuses. Stop limiting yourself. You just need to set out on the journey and every day take a step that will take you forward. Sometimes there'll be backward steps and you will, like I said before, you'll fall flat on your face and you'll need to renegotiate what the journey might be over the next few days or the next few kilometers or miles of your particular artistic process. But stop limiting yourself. Stop making excuses and just jump in.